Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to the first session on strings in Python. In this session, we are going to learn strings in Python. We will also learn concatenation and appending of strings in Python. These are the outcomes of our session. After this session, you will be able to use concatenation and appending of strings in Python. Let us begin our session. These are the contents of this session, strings, concatenation, and appending. Let's first understand what are strings. Strings are collection of characters. Characters could be digits from zero to nine. They can be alphabets both small case and capital case. Characters could be special characters also, like plus, minus, star, ampersand, percent symbol, dollar, at the rate, et cetera. These are all called as special characters. So any combination of these characters is called as a string. Strings are enclosed in single quotes or double quotes. These are the examples of string. For example, first underscore name is equal to Gopal. So here, Gopal is a string. You can observe it contains only alphabets and it is enclosed in single quotes. Second string we have declared as country is equal to India. India is also enclosed in single quotes. Third string you can observe email is equal to in double quotes, we have written gopal123 at the rate gmail.com. In third string, you can observe alphabets are also there. Digits 1 to 3 are also present. At the rate and dot, these are the special characters also included in this string. So all these three are examples of a string. Last point, strings are immutable. It means strings value cannot be modified once it is declared. For example, here, when we initialize first name variable with a value Gopal, we cannot modify that later on. That is called as immutability. How do we accept and display strings? To accept string, we are going to use our input function here is a syntax string variable is equal to input in bracket. We can give some message. So here I have entered a message, enter your string. String variable will contain the value that is entered by user. How do we display the strings? With the help of print function. So for example, print in bracket, you can write a string variable which contains our string value. So this is how we accept and display strings. Now we'll discuss strings and index. Now, whenever we accept any string from the user or whenever we initialize a variable with some string, it gets stored in memory. In memory, the strings are stored character by character. Now these memory blocks are referred with the help of indices. There are two types of indices. One is positive index and second is negative index. The positive index starts with zero, whereas negative index starts with minus one. Positive index starts from the first character, whereas negative index starts from the last character. In the diagram, you can observe the name Gopal is stored in a memory. First character is assigned a positive index zero. Second character is assigned a positive index one and so on. Similarly, last character that is small l is assigned a negative index minus one. Second last character small a is assigned a negative index minus two and so on. Here is a program demonstrating the use of string and index. We are declaring a string at line number four. You can observe 
name is equal to gopal so name is a string variable containing a string called as gopal to display this string we are using our print function you can see print in bracket i'm just mentioning name is equal to comma i'm mentioning the string variable name that is name so value contained in name will be displayed by this print function at line number 7 now to check positive index and negative index come to line number 10 in this program you can see i am displaying the first character of the string the first character of the string always has positive index as 0 so we are printing it with the help of name in square bracket 0 next character that is second character can be a third character can be displayed with the help of index 2 name of 2 and fifth character can be displayed with the help of index name of 4 because our index starts from 0 the fifth character will have index 4 similarly we have negative indices print name of minus 1 means it is going to display last character similarly name of minus 3 is going to display the respective character and so on in the output below in the black window you can see name is equal to gopal is displayed because of the line number 7 of our program where we are printing the contents of variable name line number 10 its output is displayed as the second line in our black window you can see name of 0 capital g is displayed that is first character name of 2 third character is displayed that is p and name of 4 fifth character that is small l is displayed similarly name of minus 1 that is last character l is displayed the name of minus 3 p is displayed and name of minus 5 g is displayed this is how we use indices to display contents of the string next we will learn what is concatenation and multiplication in terms of strings the first thing concatenation means adding one string object to another string object for this we use plus operator here is an example we are having two string variables first name and last name containing the values gopal and chakravarti respectively when we concatenate both these string variables using plus operator we will get a single string containing values from both the string variables so here you can see first name plus last name when we concatenate both these variables in the output we are going to get gopal chakravarti as a single string gopal chakravarti as a single string similarly we have got multiplication operator it is used to repeat string multiple times the operator is star operator here is an example when we declare a string variable as string1 equals to hello star 5 what is going to happen the hello string will be stored as five number of times as a single string that means string1 will be hello 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 means hello will be repeated five number of times and it will be stored as a single string in string one variable here is a demonstration of concatenation and multiplication first name equals to gopal last name equals to chakravarti when we print first name plus last name in the output window below you can see concatenation equals to gopal chakravarti which is a single string containing values from first name and last name similarly string1 equals to hello star 5 here we are using multiplication operator so when we print contents of string1 you can see hello is repeated five number of times and as a single string it is stored in our string1 variable thank you hello everyone welcome to our second session on strings in python the objectives of our this session is to understand string slicing and to learn some built in functions and methods of strings in python outcomes of this session will be you will be able to use string slicing you will be able to use built in string methods and functions to solve given problem 
these are the contents of this session slicing built in string methods and functions like split join upper lower and title let's start with string slicing it is used to call out a range of characters from the string slice is a sequence of characters within an original string slicing is done using square brackets in square brackets we have to mention starting index and element number here is a demo of slicing at line number 2 is a string that is swarup underscore damodar this is a string at line number 2 it is shown in comment section at line number 1 positive indices are shown that is 0 1 2 3 4 till 14 similarly at line number 3 in comment section you can see negative indices starting from the last character that is minus 1 minus 2 till minus 15 for the first character so first three lines of comment are representing the string swarup underscore damodar which we are going to use for our experiment so at line number 5 i am creating a string variable s1 and initializing with a value that is a string swarup underscore damodar in double quotes from line number 7 till 12 now we are using different ways of slicing the first way that is line number 7 s1 in square bracket 3 3 colon 7 so here 3 represents the starting index it is a positive index colon 7 represents the seventh element remember 7 represents the seventh element 3 represents starting index whereas second element represents the element number that is seventh element so from positive index at index 3 which character is present at index 3 character small r is present correct then the seventh element is small p the seventh element is small p okay so when we run this program we are going to get in output r double o p okay r double o p that will be our output next we can see line number 8 s1 of colon 7 s1 in square bracket colon 7 so here before colon we have not mentioned anything so by default the starting index will be treated as zero so it will start from the first character of the string and seven represents again seventh element so from capital s till small p that is entire name as swarup will be printed so in the output window you can see s1 colon 7 swarup is displayed similarly line number 9 in program line number 9 s1 of 3 colon so when we have got 3 so 3 indicates starting index correct so 3 is the starting index colon when there is no element mentioned it goes till last element so in the output you can see it starts from small r so small r till last character that is small r all the characters are displayed so root underscore damodar this sub string is displayed as a result line number 10 you can observe it is using negative indices so s1 in square bracket minus 12 colon minus 8 so minus 12 is a starting index and minus 8 indicates a character before index minus 8 a character before index minus 8 okay so let's go to the negative index minus 12 the character is r and a character before index minus 8 which character do we have before index minus 8 it is small p okay so as a result in the output window you can see third line is representing s1 of minus 12 colon minus 8 the result is r double op root okay this is the sub string or slice displayed as an output next line number 11 s1 of 
colon minus eight. Again, before colon, no starting index is mentioned. So it is going to consider minus 15 as the starting index and till minus eight means minus eight before that, whatever is the character that will be displayed. So it will start from capital S and it will go till small p. So Swarup is displayed as an output. This is the second line, second last line in our output window. Lastly, line number 12 is S1 of minus 12 colon. So minus 12 is the starting index and after colon, no character is mentioned or no number is mentioned. So it will go till last character. So it starts from R, that is small r, root underscore damodar, this string will be displayed as an output. Next is some built-in string functions. There are three functions we are going to discuss, that is dot upper, dot lower, and dot title. So they have to be used along with a string variable. You have to mention a string variable dot the function name. So three functions we'll be discussing, upper, lower, and title used along with a string variable. So here is a demonstration. We are declaring a string S1 with a value tolerant like a tree. So on this, we are applying upper function. So S1 dot upper. When we apply this, you can see in the output window, the first line is displayed as tolerant like a tree where every character is in capital case. Similarly, line number five, S1 dot lower, when we use this function on string S1, all characters will be converted into small case and will be displayed. So second line in the output window, you can see tolerant like a tree is displayed where every character is in small case. Then title, title function is used to convert a given string in title case. Now, title means, title sentence means every word is having first character in capital case. So here in the output, you can see S1 dot title equals to tolerant like a tree, where first character of tolerant is capital, first character of like is capital, A is also capital, and first character of three is also capital. So every word is having first character in capital case. Next is a split function. It returns a list of strings from original string. I have highlighted list of strings. So what is the output? The split function returns a list of strings. All those strings are separated by white space by default in original string. We may use other character of separation instead of white space. It can also be used to remove some characters from original string. This is a demonstration of split function. We are using the same string S1 equals to tolerant like a tree. We are printing S1 dot split. In the output, you can see by default, white space was considered as a character of separation. S1 equals to, at line number two here, S1 equals to tolerant like a tree where after tolerant, there is one blank space or a white space. After like, there is a white space. After A, there is a white space. So all these white spaces will be considered as character of separation to create a list of strings. Means tolerant will be considered as one string. Like will be considered as second string. A will be considered as third string. And three will be considered as fourth string. And all these four strings will be combined together into a single list. And that will be the output of our split function. So in the output, you can see the first line is displayed as S1 dot split equals to. In square brackets, you can see tolerant comma like comma A comma tree. So all these four strings are combined together in a list. Similarly, we can consider any other character other than white space to generate such list. Example is given here. At line number five, you can see S2 is declared as a string, Gaurang colon Nimai colon Chaitanya colon Vishwambar. So here, instead of white space, I am having colon as a character of separation between two words in this string, correct? So this colon will be used in the split function now. So S2 dot split, 
in bracket you can see in double quotes i have mentioned colon as a character of separation means this colon will be used to separate between two words in a given string s2 that means gaurang and nimai they are separated by colon so gaurang will be considered as a separate string nimai will be considered as a separate string so output of this line will be gaurang nimai chaitanya and vishwambar these four strings will be created and they will be stored as a single list and it will be displayed so here in the output window you can see s2 dot split gaurang nimai chaitanya and vishwambar these four strings are stored in a list and the entire list is printed here next is the join function it combines a list of strings into a new single string it combines a list of strings into a new single string in previous we discussed a new a single string was split into a list of small small strings correct this previous split function was used to generate a list of small small strings whereas this join function is used to create a string from a list a character for separation can be specified while joining strings from list here is a syntax in double quotes we can mention character of separation dot join function in bracket you have to specify list object so here is a demo of this at line number 3 we are creating a list one equals to there are names stored in them so nimai pandit convinced sarvam bhattacharya these are the strings stored inside a list next we are creating string s1 using that list one so s1 equals to in double quotes i am mentioning a single white space which is considered as a character of separation dot operator then join function and we are passing to that as a parameter list one means join function will take list one as an input and from list one it will take all the strings that is nimai pandit convinced sarvam bhattacharya all these strings will be taken and they will be combined together as a single string where each word will be separated from other word by using a white space character so when we print s1 at line number 5 you can see we have printed s1 so in the output window you can see nimai pandit convinced sarvam bhattacharya as a single string is displayed where nimai pandit convinced sarvam bhattacharya each of these words are separated from each other by a single white space character means nimai and pandit they are separated by a single white space character similarly pandit and convinced are also separated by single white space character next line number 7 we are creating another list list 2 equals to same list we have defined now s2 is equal to we are changing the character of separation in double quotes i am writing underscore dot join function and to that we are passing list one as a string a list object so when we print s2 you can see second line in the output window in the output window below s2 is equal to nimai underscore pandit underscore convinced underscore sarabham underscore bhattacharya what has happened here a new single string is generated from all these words from list one where each word is separated from another word using underscore character next line number 11 we are defining one string a is equal to bharat varsh s3 is a string which is generated by using join function on string variable a where the character of separation is dash or minus symbol so you can see s3 is equal to line number 12 in this program s3 is equal to in double quotes dash or hyphen dot join in bracket we are passing a as a parameter so when we display s3 below in the output window you can see s3 is equal to bharat varsh is displayed where each character of this string is separated by a hyphen or a dash or a minus symbol thank you
Hello everyone. I welcome you all for the third session on strings in Python. These are the objectives of this session to understand Z field, find and strip function in Python, to understand count and capitalize function in Python. After this session, you will be able to use Z field, find and strip functions and also count and capitalize functions to solve given problem in Python. These are the contents, Z field, find, strip, L strip, R strip, count and capitalize. Let's begin with Z field. It adds zeros at the beginning of the string to complete the specified length. Find function, it finds the first occurrence of the specified value. It returns minus one if the value is not found. Here is the syntax of find function, string dot find. It accepts three parameters, search value, start and end. The first parameter search value is the value to be searched. Second parameter start is the point to start search. By default, the start value is zero. End point specifies where to stop the search. By default, it is end of string. The start and end parameters are optional. Remember, start and end parameters are optional. Here is a demo of Z field. ID number equals to 1001 is a string defined at line number three in our program. I'm generating a new ID number at line number five, where I'm applying a Z field function on the ID number string. So you can see new ID number equals to ID number dot Z field function. And there I'm specifying the string length that I expect. So I expect string length to be 10. So, but ID number is containing only four digits, that is 1001. So using this string of four digits, a 10 digit string will be generated where remaining six digits will be zero. That is the use of Z field function. In the comment, you can again read Z field function fills zeros in the given string to complete the length as specified. So here 10 is the length as specified so when we display new ID number in the output window, you can see new ID number is displayed as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So six times zeros followed by 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is a 10 digit string display. Next demo of find function. We are creating two strings. The first string is S1 equals to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comma Gopal Chakravarti. S2 is equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, a string containing 0 to 9 digits. Now we are finding Chakravarti in the given string S1 at line number 6. So line number 6, you can observe S1 dot find in bracket we are specifying Chakravarti. It means Chakravarti word is to be searched in the string S1 and wherever it is found as the first occurrence that will be displayed as an output or that will be written by the find function. So we can observe Chakravarti is found at index 11 means capital C of Chakravarti is obtained at index 11 in the given string S1. You can count Vishwanath is having how many characters? So V, I, S, H, W, five characters, then A, N, A, T, H, five characters. That is total 10 characters for Vishwanath. And then a white space, one blank space is 11th character. Okay. 
So till 11th character index is 11. Now for 12th character, that is capital C, for 12th character, capital C index is 11. So Chakravarti occurs at index 11. That's why in the output window, we can see the first line Chakravarti found at index 11. Next is at line number seven, we are trying to find five, a digit five in string S2. So S2 dot find five. So five is obtained at index five, correct? It is obtained at index five. So that five is displayed over here. Similarly, we are trying to search or find a single character A in string S1, line number eight in our program, you can see S1 dot find in double quotes A comma starting position comma ending position or stopping position. So start position and stop position are specified in that range only where small a is found that will be returned as an index. So you can see in our program, in string S1, we have index three as a starting position. So index three starting position means V I S H. So it will, it will start with H and then it will go on further. So in this string, a will be obtained at index five. A will be obtained at index five because you can see in S1, V, I, S, H, W. Till this, we have got five characters and small a, the first occurrence of small a is the sixth character. And for character six, index is five. That's why in the output window, we can see A, found at index five. Next, we'll discuss strip function. Strip function, it removes leading and trailing specified characters. Default is a space character from the given string. This is the syntax string dot strip character to be removed. Similarly, we have got L strip it removes leading specified characters from the string. Leading specified character. R strip removes trailing specified character from string. So these are the three functions. We will see demo of this. Strip, L strip, and R strip. So S1 is declared as, you can see in double quotes, triple plus gaur space sundar, four times plus, double quotes complete. So S1 is declared as a string where in leading there are three plus characters and in trailing there are four plus characters. S2 is declared as in leading there is also black spaces, now the, and in trailing also there are blank spaces. Now at line number five, we are trying to remove plus character from S1. So we are calling strip function for this S1 dot strip. In bracket, we are specifying the character to be removed, that is plus. So in the output window, you can see the first line is remove plus character. As output, we get Gaur Sundar string displayed. So what happened? From both leading and trailing, all the plus characters are removed from S1 string. Originally, S1 string contains plus characters in both leading and trailing positions. And all these plus characters are removed when we applied strip functions on that S1. Line number six, we're trying to remove space character from S2. So we're calling strip function S2 dot strip. Line number six, you can see in print function S2 dot strip. We are not specifying any character there in double quotes. So by default, blank space is considered as a character to be removed. So you can see S2 is equal to Navdvip and leading and trailing position, there are blank spaces. 
all these blank spaces will be removed and in the output window you can see second line that is remove default space character equals to now the as a string is displayed there are no leading and trailing blank spaces which were originally in s2 string line number 7 remove uh, remove leading plus character here we are trying to remove only plus character from the leading position so s1 dot l strip in bracket we specify in double quotes plus character to be removed so when we run this line in the output you can see gaur sundar followed by four plus characters is displayed means what happened the leading three plus characters are removed because of l strip function similarly line number 8 s1 dot r strip plus symbol to be removed so r strip means remove trailing characters remove trailing plus characters from given string so in the output window last line you can see remove trailing plus character equals to triple plus symbol gaur sundar so after this after gaur sundar there are no four times plus symbols or plus characters so trailing plus characters are removed and the remaining string is displayed as it is next we will see count function and capitalize function count function returns the number of times a specified value occurs in a string this is the syntax string dot count it accepts again three parameters that is search value start index and ending index the start index and end index are optional next is capitalize function it returns a string where the first character is upper case it returns a string where the first character is upper case let's see the demo of this count and capitalize function we are declaring a string s1 at line number 3 in this program pratap rudra was a king of orissa pratap rudra would clean street in cart festival this is the string we have declared let us count how many times the word pratap rudra appears in given string s1 so for that we are using s1 dot count function and to that we are passing pratap rudra as a string parameter so when we see the output of this line in the output window see the first line count of pratap rudra is equals to 2 why because in s1 pratap rudra word appears two times then at line number 7 we are creating a new string s2 with a value mother earth now we are capitalizing this s2 by using capitalize function so s2 dot capitalize when we run this line what happens as an output you can see capital m appears in the mother earth string originally it was small m in s2 but when we applied capitalize function on s2 the first character of the string is capitalized so mother earth is displayed as seen in the output window thank you hello everyone welcome to the fourth session on strings in python in this session we are going to learn membership operators and use of ord and chr functions in python after this session you will be able to use membership operators with strings in python to solve the given problem also you will be able to use ord and chr functions let's begin with in and not in membership operators in operator it is used to check if a string is present in your string or not similarly not in operator is used to check if a string is not present in your string here is a demo of membership operator s1 is the similar string as we discussed in our previous session pratap rudra was a king of orissa pratap rudra would clean street in cart festival so we are trying to see whether festival this word belongs to string s1 or not so for this purpose we are going to check with the help of in operator so you can see print at line number 5 we are writing print in double quotes festival in s1 so here we are trying to check 
whether string festival is present in S1 or not. If it is present, it is going to display true. So in the output window, you can see the first line is displayed as true. Why? Because festival word is present in string S1. At the end of string S1, you can see cart festival. Can you see? The festival word is present in S1. That's why the line five will print true value. Similarly, line number seven, we are trying to check whether India is not present in S1. So when we run this line seven, it is also true. Why? Because S1 string does not contain a word India. S1 string does not contain word India. That's why line seven will display true value because India is not present in S1. Next, we'll discuss ORD and CHR functions. The first function ORD, it returns the number representing the Unicode, also called as ASCII code of a specified character. What is the syntax? ORD in bracket, you have to specify the character for which you want Unicode or ASCII code. Next is CHR function. It returns the character that represents the specified Unicode or ASCII code. Syntax is CHR in bracket, you have to write a number for which you want the character. Here is a demo of both the functions, ORD and CHR. We are defining a string S1 is equal to in double quotes A, capital A. Now I want to know what is ASCII code of capital A and small a. So how do I do it? Line number four, you can see print ASCII code of A equals to comma. I am using ORD function of S1, ORD in bracket S1. So when we pass S1 as a parameter to ORD function, because S1 is containing value as capital A, it's ASCII code will be returned by ORD function and that will be printed by print function. So in the output window, first line is ASCII code of capital A is equal to 65. Similarly, at line number five, if we try to display ASCII code of small a by using ORD function, observe carefully how we have written ORD, ORD in bracket in double quotes small a. So small a is the character for which I want to know ASCII code. So that will be written by ORD function and print function will display the value. So in the output window, second line, you can see print ASCII code of a, which is displayed as 97. Similarly, if I want to know the character for a given ASCII value, we can use CHR function for that. So N1 is equal to 65. I'm just defining one integer variable. N1 is equal to 65. Now I'm trying to print the respective character for 65. So character for ASCII code 65 is equal to CHR of N1. So N1 is a parameter passed to CHR function. It is going to display me character capital E. In the output window below, you can see line number three, it is displaying character for ASCII code 65 is equals to A. Similarly, line number nine in our program, we are trying to display ASCII code for 97. Uh, character for ASCII code 97. So in the output window, you can see last line character for ASCII code 97 is equals to small A. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I welcome you to the fifth session on strings in Python. In this session, we are going to learn formatting operators of strings in Python. After this session, you will be able to use formatting operators of strings. These are the contents of this session, string formatting, percentage format, and dot format. Let us start with percentage format. Here, we are creating a string name is equal to Srivas. In double quotes, you can see Srivas is defined as a string value and it is assigned to a name variable. Now, we are trying to print with formatted output. So second line on this screen, you can see 
in double quotes i am displaying like this hello comma percentage s full stop double quotes complete after that percentage name is written so percentage s will be replaced by the value stored in variable name here name variable contains shrivas value so that shrivas will be replaced at the place of percentage s so when we run that line in the output third line you can see the output will be, output will be displayed as hello comma shrivas full stop in order to insert more than one variable you must use a tuple of those variables for example here you can see we are creating two variables name equals to shrivas and age equals to 25 so to display a string using these two variables you can see next line that is hello comma percentage s dot you are percentage b full stop double quotes complete after that we are writing percent in bracket that is called as a tuple so in round parenthesis we are specifying name comma age so name and age these variables values will be replaced at the place of percentage s and percentage d respectively so last line you can see on the screen hello shrivas full stop you are 25 so what has happened here percentage d is replaced by 25 value percentage s is replaced by shrivas value so here when we are trying to display string contains we have to use percentage s as a format specifier whereas if you want to display decimal value or an integer value you have to use percentage d as a format specifier percent s and percent d are called as format specifiers these are the basic argument specifiers percentage s is used for string percent d is used for integers percent f is used for floating point numbers and percent dot in angular brackets number of digits followed by small f it is used to display floating point numbers with a fixed amount of digits to the right of the dot operator next we have got percent small x or percent capital x that is used for integer in hexadecimal representations so percent small x is for lower case percent capital x is for upper case hex representation now why percent formatting is not great because in a yellow box on the screen you can see i have mentioned the note using several parameters and longer strings your code will quickly become much less easily readable for example here on the screen in black box you can see there are five variables declared first name with a value shrivas last name with a value pandit age equals to 25 profession equal to teacher affiliation equals to navdeep university so hello percent s space percent s full stop you are percent s full stop you are a percent s full stop you were a member of percent s and after this we are using a tuple of all the five variables separated by comma in rounded parenthesis so first name comma last name comma age comma profession comma affiliation so as an output what do we get hello shrivas pandit you are 25 you are a teacher you were a member of navdeep university so here point to be noted is the string that we have written using format specifiers that is percent s hello comma percent s percent s you are a percent s you are a percent s you were a member of percent s so this string has become little bit difficult to be read so readability is reduced as we increase the number of parameters another formatting is str dot format the replacement fields are marked by curly braces in this formatting 
the replacement fields are marked by curly braces here is an example second line on the screen you can see hello comma in curly braces full stop you are again curly braces full stop after double quotes we are writing dot format dot format is compulsory and in bracket we specify the parameters or variable names to be replaced in place of curly braces the name variable its value will be replaced its value will be put in the place of first curly braces whereas the value of age will be put in the place of second curly braces so in the output you can see below third line on the screen that is hello shrivas you are 25 so shrivas is replaced in the place of first curly braces whereas 25 is put in the place of second curly braces now you can reference variables in any order by referencing their index very important point to be noted the sequence does not matter for us to remember we can just use the indices to specify at which place which value to be put for example second last line on the screen hello comma in curly braces 1 full stop you are in curly braces 0 full stop dot format now here age comma name now age is appearing in the first place name is appearing in the second place correct but now you can observe age is having index 0 and name is having index 1 so in curly braces the first curly brace is containing index as 1 so what will be put there names contents will be put at the place of 1 are you getting name variable name that is a second parameter and it is having index 1 so its contents will be placed at the place of first curly brace and the contents of age which is at the zeroth index will be placed at the second curly brace that is you are in curly brace is zero so that's why in the output last line you can see hello shrivas you are 25 same output appears even though the sequence is changed in the second line on the screen you can see the sequence was dot format name comma age and in the second last line dot format age comma name but because we used indices there was no need to remember the sequence here is a demo of dot format print in the integer number is in curly braces colon d dot so dot format 1 2 3 okay dot format 1 2 3 the integer number is displayed as 123 in the output window followed by full stop the first line in the output window you can see the integer number is colon 123 full stop next is the float number is second uh, print function in the program print the float number is colon f in curly braces dot format 123 dot Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, twenty-three. There are so many digits after decimal point. But when we see the output, you can see the second line in the output window is the float number is one twenty-three point four five six seven eight nine, and last one two three digits are not displayed. In the yellow box, I have written this note: only six digits after. the decimal point are displayed okay only six digits up are displayed after the decimal point now third print function in our program is print binary 0 colon b octal 0 colon small o hexadecimal 0 colon small x dot format 12 so 12 is the value to be displayed in different number systems the first number system is binary so that's why in the output you can see 1100 which is equivalent of decimal 12 then octal is 14 then hexadecimal is small c because we have used small x we are getting small c if we would have used capital x it would have displayed capital c next we have got another demo of floating point numeric constants so 
second line in the program you can see print this is uh, zero colon f percent in curly braces we are writing one dot so there are two parameters to the dot format function so dot format in bracket 100 comma true okay 100 comma true so in the output window you can see the first line is this is 100 percent true this line we wanted to display so that's why we have used this formatting operator that is second line uh, in our program that is print this is zero colon f percent symbol is there space in curly braces one okay so zero is replaced by 100 and because it is floating point formatting that's why we are getting it displayed as 100.6 times zero 100.6 times zero followed by true word which is replaced for one that is curly braces inside which one is there then to limit the precision, line number four comment is to limit the precision because I don't want now here all the six zeros to be displayed after 100 or I don't want many decimal points digits displayed. Rather, I want to limit this precision. So for this purpose, we can use a formatting like this. Line number five, you can observe print average of this in curly braces zero, that is first parameter to be displayed was one colon point two f so here point two f is indicating that after decimal point only two digits are to be displayed after decimal point only two digits are to be displayed and here one indicates the first index okay index one and zero indicates index zero one indicates index one. So dot format function you can observe. In dot format, I am writing semester as the uh, zero index parameter, comma, 78.234876 as the index one parameter. So index one parameter will be placed in place of one and semester will be placed in place of zero. So in the second line of output, you can see average of this semester was 78.23%. So what has happened? Only 23 is displayed after decimal point. Why? Because point 0.2F was mentioned in formatting. Point 0.2F was mentioned in formatting. Yeah, so next is for no decimal places. If you don't want any decimal places to be displayed after. So you can use uh, this kind of formatting as shown in line number eight of our program. So print average of this first parameter that is index zero was one colon. You can see dot zero F. So dot zero F means no digits after decimal points, no digits after decimal point. In previous line was at line number five, it was written as dot two F means only two digits after decimal point. And here only zero uh, digits after decimal points. That means no digits after decimal point. So dot format, you can see semester comma 78.234876. So when we run this line, line number eight, you can observe the third line of our output screen. Average of this semester was 78%. What has happened here? There are no decimal points displayed, correct? So only 78 value is displayed. Similarly, we have got conversion of an integer to its binary format. So line number 12, you can observe the zero means the in curly bracket zero of 15 is one colon B. So after colon, if you are writing small b means it indicates binary number, okay? So dot format, in dot format, you can see two parameters are passed, that is binary comma 100. So binary will be put at the place of zero in curly braces and 100 will be put at the place of one in second curly braces at line number 12. And because after colon small b is written, it means that 100 has to be displayed in binary format. So in the second last line in the output window, second last line in the output window, you can see the binary of 15 is the binary of 15 is 
110100. Okay. So like this, uh, we can display binary numbers. Similarly, the octal of 15 is displayed as 144. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to the sixth session on strings in Python. The objective of this session is to understand F strings in Python, that is formatted strings. As an outco outcome, you'll be able to use formatted strings in Python to solve given problems. These are the contents. We are going to study concepts, syntax, and examples. Let's begin with F strings. It's a new way and improved way to format strings in Python. It is also called as formatted string literals. F strings are string literals that have an F at the beginning and curly braces containing expressions that will be replaced with their values. Here is an example. We are using two variables, name equals to Srivas, age equals to 25. Using these two variables, we are displaying one formatted string. Hello, Srivas, you are 25. So how do we display this string? You can see the third line in the screen. F in double quotes, hello comma in curly braces name, full stop. You are in curly braces age, full stop. So what is going to happen here? You can observe F is preceded with the string. So F can be small or it can be capital also. So in place of name in first curly braces, Srivas will be displayed. And in place of age in second curly braces, 25 will be displayed. So when we execute such line, we get the output as hello Srivas, you are 25. This is called as formatting, formatted string literal. Arbitrary expressions. Now, because F strings are evaluated at runtime, you can put any and all valid Python expressions in them. For example, here you can see F in double quotes in first curly braces, I'm writing two into 37. So this is an arithmetic expression. It will be evaluated at runtime. That is 30, 74 value will be calculated and it will be displayed as a string. Now we can also call functions. So here you can see a function is defined called as two underscore lowercase. That is DEF two underscore lowercase. It is accepting one parameter called as input and it is returning the lowercase of this input parameter. You can see input dot lower function is called. Now we are defining one string variable name equals to a value Chaitanya. So we are trying to call this two underscore lowercase function in formatted string literal. So we are doing it like F in double quotes in curly braces, you are calling that function two underscore lowercase. And to that function, we are passing a parameter called as name. Curly braces complete is great. So this is the formatted string we want to display. So while evaluating this statement, Python will call this function two underscore lowercase. And to that, it is going to pass our capital case Chaitanya name. So that will be returned in small case. So all letters of the Chaitanya will be converted into small case and that small string will be returned and that will be displayed in the output. So you can see in the output Chaitanya is great is displayed where Chaitanya word is in small case while it was uh, defined in capital case in the beginning. We also have the option of calling a method directly. So we can directly call a method. You can see F in double quotes in curly braces name dot lower is beautiful. So what is happening here? Name is a variable which is containing Chaitanya in capital case, correct? So to that we are applying lower function. So what will happen? Chaitanya will be converted into lower case and is beautiful. So this string will be displayed as Chaitanya is beautiful. Here is one more demonstration of formatted strings. You can see here is one program. So we are defining a function called as greet, define greet. To that we are passing name comma question. So it is going to return a formatted string. You can see return F in double quotes, hello name, exclamatory sign, how is it question, okay? So there are two curly braces, means two parameters are to be replaced. So to that, we are passing variables that is name and question. Then we are at line number four, you can see we are using a print function and inside print function, I am calling grid function. 
So to this grid function, I'm passing two parameters. The first is Raghav and second is that you have left us. Okay, so these two parameters will be used for formatted string literal. At line number two, you can see at line number two, return F, hello in curly brackets, name is there. So this name will be replaced by Raghav and then question will be replaced by that you have left us, okay? Line number six and seven, we are defining two, two integer variables, a equals to 10, b equals to 20. We are printing a formatted string literal again. At line number eight, you can see print f in double quotes, in curly braces, a plus in second curly braces, b equals to in third curly uh, braces and writing a plus b. So what is this mathematical? expression. So this expression will be evaluated at runtime. Okay. Next line number is 11. S is equal to Gaurang is displayed. So Gaurang, I want to convert that in uppercase, let's say. So using print function, I'm doing it like this. Print F in double quotes, uppercase of S is equal to S dot upper. You can see we have directly called the upper function on the string variable S. Okay. So isn't it interesting and easy way of displaying the contents in formatted way? The easiest one, correct? The previous method that we discussed was a bit difficult where you had to mention a percent, that is format specifiers. Then you have to mention a tuple of variables. Then you have to mention even indices also, correct? To get the proper output. But here there is no need of creating any indices or maintaining any tuple or specifying any kind of format specifier like percent %d, percent %s, percent %f and so on. It's so easy to use formatted string literals. Next line number 14, we can see roll number equals to one is defined, name equals to Srivas Pandit, place equals to Navdeep. So we are displaying a formatted string using line number 17, that is print f in double quotes, roll number in curly braces, roll underscore number, that is variable name, comma named in curly braces, uh, name is displayed, comma, is from the place we have mentioned in third curly braces. So you can see the output of this. Hello, Raghav, how is it that you have left us? This is the output of first function, that is grid function. Here, this grid function we had defined and we had called that inside a print function, line number four, correct? Next is mathematical expression. You can see 10 plus 20 equals to 30. We had defined it here at line number eight, you can see print formatted string a plus b equals to a plus b in curly braces, correct? Then we have got uppercase of uh, Gaurang is equal to everything in capital case, correct? Gaurang is displayed in uppercase because of the calling of upper function on string s. At line number 12, you can see s dot upper is called na? because of which what happened? Gaurang is displayed in capital case. Similarly, we have got Role number one named Srivas Pandit is from Navdeep. So this string got displayed because of this last line. So last line that is line number 17, F, role number, <coughs> comma, named and is from place. Thank you.